In the last week, the US state of California was battered by rainfall in the plains and snow in the mountainous regions, leading to flooding, mudslides and claiming six lives. This rainfall is said to have been caused by an atmospheric river system, which is a common precipitation system in California. However, meteorologists say that this could be one of the worst storms to hit Southern California in 150 years, dropping over one feet of rain in less than two weeks. Initial estimates show that it has caused over 9 to $11 billion in damage to the state. In this episode of Pure Science, we we'll look at atmospheric river systems, how they originate, and how climate change impacts their scale and frequency. Atmospheric rivers are narrow stretches in the atmosphere that carry water vapor from the tropics to the poles. They are called rivers in the sky by the National Ocean and Atmospheric Administration website of the US government. They are called this because of the huge size and the huge amount of water vapor that they carry. They are also known as cloud bands or tropical plumes. They were first analyzed in 1992 by Ari Newell, who studied the 2000 km long and 300 to 400 km wide cloud bands in his now seminal study. He called them tropospheric rivers because of the layer of the atmosphere where they are found. On average, these warm tropical cloud bands carry the same amount of water that flows at the mouth of the Mississippi River, which is one of the largest rivers in the United States. Now, while atmospheric rivers exist around the world, like in the Indian Ocean, some of the more strong atmospheric river systems form in the Pacific Ocean, including the Pineapple Express. This is the nickname of the system that is responsible for the current Californian storms. It is named so because it originates in the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii and travels to the west coast of the US. As the water vapor carrying river system reaches California, it encounters the mountains and starts to cool down, lashing its rains over the state. This process is called orographic lifting of the atmospheric river systems. Now, atmospheric river systems are actually quite useful for rainfall and they account for over 40 to 50% of the annual precipitation in the west coast of the United States. Last year too, a series of 12 atmospheric river systems battered California within the first three months of the year. However, in California, a study in 2011 estimated that at least 20 to 50% of the state's entire water supply comes from atmospheric river systems. The other side of this meteorological phenomenon is associated with heavy flooding like the one that we are currently seeing. And this year, because it's an El Nino year, also contributes to the extreme levels of precipitation due to the Pineapple Express. El Nino is a phenomenon when warmer sea temperatures in the Pacific Ocean change rainfall patterns and atmospheric circulation patterns. So they influence the winds that carry jet streams and atmospheric river systems. They also influence the intensity of atmospheric river systems themselves because warmer seas lead to more moisture collection in the atmosphere. Atmospheric river systems also exist as part of cold fronts of extratropical cyclones. These cyclones are essentially low pressure systems in middle latitudes. So the area between the Tropic of Cancer and the Arctic region in the north and the Tropic of Capricorn and the Antarctic region in the south. So these low pressure weather systems can lead to a lot of weather events from blizzards to extreme rainfall to very strong wind. They have within them cold fronts, warm fronts and something called occluded fronts. An occluded front is when a stream of warm air gets caught between two streams of cold air. Atmospheric river systems are usually part of the cold fronts of extratropical cyclones and they mainly form during the winter season of whichever hemisphere that they are a part of. When they interact with land, especially rocky terrain like mountains, they cause the most precipitation. The role played by atmospheric river systems in destruction is not limited to California. A study published last year in Communications Earth and Environment Journal looked at the total amount of rain and flooding caused by atmospheric river systems from 1951 to 2020 in India. 
The study found patterns that showed that while peninsular India experienced atmospheric river systems during the summer monsoon, the northern plains had atmospheric river systems during July to August. There were a total of 596 atmospheric river systems logged in India in this period and a whooping 65% of them were associated with causing some sort of flooding. Also, 7 out of the 10 most severe floods in India in this period were linked to atmospheric river systems. In recent years though, scientists have been more keenly studying how atmospheric river systems can be affected by climate change. The most obvious way is that as the climate warms up, there will be more moisture collected in the atmospheric river systems. This is because of something called the clausius clapeyron equation in thermodynamics, which is used to understand phase transitions like the transition of a substance changing from the liquid phase to the vapor phase. Let's break this down. This equation explains how an increase in temperature leads to molecules of a substance like water getting more energy. With this energy, the molecules can break free from the liquid phase to the vapor phase and thus increase the pressure exerted by the water vapor. So, as the temperature of the earth increases, the atmosphere becomes warmer and more capable of holding moisture, which is water vapor. This equation has been attributed by scientists and meteorologists to understand how climate change and global warming will lead to stronger and more intense atmospheric river systems. Modeling by scientists shows that not only will atmospheric river systems carry more water, but they'll also last longer, they'll be more frequent, and they will lead to more flooding warnings also. This is Akanksha Mishra. For more such analysis, follow the print on our social media platforms.